Thank you so much, Lola, for having me, despite my bad position. <laughs> uh, and congratulations <laughs> for your first 15 years of high quality <laughs> service. like to thank you for your commitment to quality, to continuous improvement, to learning, and to having fun in the language industry. This is important as well, I think. That's my philosophy. So, last but not least, dear colleagues and friends, it's all about terminology. Let me uh, tackle a little bit the, the skills and competences needed in terminology, in particular for the translation businesses. Then let me give you a short progress report about the first two years of uh, qualifying and certifying at international level. And then the lessons learned and feedback from all of you. Uh, with respect to, to skills and competences, actually it, it's grouped around these two questions. First, why bother? And second, how to do it, if you realize that it's worth bothering. So why bother? It's actually not, not very difficult. Not, not even for stupid clients. It should be rather clear if you show them this picture. It should be more or less self-understanding that, well, yeah, you have an uh, enterprise or organizational terminology, and then it's spreading, and the, the terminology is like weed everywhere and you somehow you end up in, in a mess when you do not handle it and it even hurts. I like this very much, this pain curve, because I found out that, that, even, that even stupid managers like I am, I am a manager, be careful I'm not a terminologist, I'm not a translator, I, I have some backgrounds, I know your industry rather well, but I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm a manager, so even I understand that first it looks good if you don't touch terminology issues and it doesn't hurt, but by time, look what happened with that red line, it's getting worse and worse and it hurts even uh, more and more. So, on the other hand, when you do touch terminology management, it hurts in the beginning a lot. You, know, you raise all kind of tricky and nasty questions and issues, but then finally it's getting better and better and pain you know, decreases by time. And last but not least, third good argument uh, about the importance of, of dealing with terminology. Example number one, standardized terminology helps in risk and safety management. Example two, of course, in all kinds of technical documentations where we just rely on, on correct and consistent terminology. And of course, in our business, uh, consistent terminology in translation and localization is key. It's all about quality. Uh, by the way, I, I, I like that notion of Professor Venuti very much of, of that, that hidden or unconscious uh, concept of quality each and every translator has when translating. So I do believe that we, uh, we would improve communication uh, and commitment to quality when we make these hidden unconscious parameters of what is a good translation more explicit. And that's actually what we're doing when we do uh, terminology work. Uh, second question, when, when we understood, okay, yeah, it, it's worth yeah, messing around with terminology, yeah, you know, why we should bother, then we ask ourselves, but how? Uh, we first, a couple of years ago, we first wanted to, to have a, a, a short overview of how it is done, not how it should be done, that that's we knew pretty well, but how it's done in real practice, in real life, and there was a nice... Um, uh, report, a survey uh, published also, you have here the, uh, uh, the data, uh, 145 responses from communication professionals, mainly translators and project managers, and mainly in the North American uh, market. So this could really 
be interesting uh, for you and from the ICT and uh, language industry, so information communication technology and the language industry itself. So I, I give you only three uh, examples of questions we've been uh, asking because the, the answers are, are rather interesting. So one of these questions uh, has been, what tools are you or your clients using to collect and document <coughs> terminology? And you see, spreadsheet, number one still, of course, but then, obviously, in the, in the corporate world and in, in larger industries, uh, terminology management systems already uh, had place number two. Style guides, term extraction tool, even interesting enough, Word document, uh, SharePoint, etc. What kind of processes do you use to support your translation processes? Another question was computer assisted, 91%. Terminology management, 79%. Wow. Globalization and or what? Uh, machine translation, 30%. Two years ago, maybe only higher. And last but not least, this could be also interesting for you, of course. Where are your clients located? And this was the North American market, mainly US and, and uh, less Canada. So 90% United States, followed by 81% from Europe, followed by 65% Canada, 65 Asia, 59 Latin America, 56 Australia, 54 Africa. I think this is rather uh, interesting you know, that it's kind of well balanced actually where our clients sit in that globalized uh, world and globalized uh, business and industry. So how to do it? Uh, the, the International Network for Terminology, where I'm privileged to be the director, does terminology trainings for 25 years. Uh, so uh, we have quite a lot of experience in what is needed, how the market uh, is developing. So we came up with a kind of a basic um, uh, training program um, uh, uh, for, not for terminologists, this is very tricky in, in Canada where it's, it's uh, one of the big single countries where it is a, a, a professional, a protected professional terminologist, but it is for, for terminology manager sometimes not even knowing that they are terminology managers. <laughs> Means for all these poor guys who, who just uh, need to handle terminology in, in what form ever, in a spreadsheet, in Excel, in what, whatever. Yeah. You just sometimes they get the job. Hey, you are the one to, to, to cope with these problems. So for these people with all the various backgrounds, not necessarily a linguistic background, uh, we came up with uh, these basic uh, training programs and six basic units. And this is actually the current state of the art of, of competences and skills you should have at the basic level when you tackle terminology issues, when you do terminology work, when you do terminology management. Uh, so first, okay, that, that's the uh, why bother part, understanding terminology management. What actually is terminology? Why should we do it in, a, in an organized way? terminology work and management, and how terminology uh, work is embedded in your organization and work environment. This uh, seems to be very important for people who, who are also in the translation departments are quite isolated in the company, you know, and don't have necessarily a very good standing. Uh, the, the, the communication with the top management or decision makers and the translation department is not the best, I learned. Uh, then immediately we go into the how-to part, terminology management skills. How to search and collect terminology, how to store and retrieve, how to point terms, at a basic level. No, no sophisticated research involved here, just the basic hands-on how to do it. Uh, how to manage monolingual, multilingual terminology, how to manage terminology projects, very important. At the University of Vienna, in spite of the fact that, that we are really uh, pioneers in terms of having even a professorship in, in terminology and, and uh, language technology, uh, the new bachelor students, they didn't 
have uh, until 2007, until the time when, when I was uh, invited to, to have that uh, lecture, they didn't have uh, education in project management at the very basic level, simple project management. And they were so grateful for, 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 for my basic uh, lectures because I could implement it and use it immediately in my projects. It was so helpful. So that was really very rewarding for me to, to introduce these basic skills of project management for the bachelor students. Terminology, that's more sophisticated but loved uh, by our students and trainers who, who do that, the practitioners. Uh, terminology strategies for business processes. How to present the business case for terminology. How to calculate argued costs and the famous return on investment, because as you all know, terminology work is highly costly. Huh? How to involve relevant stakeholders. This is a critical success factor to my mind. Huh? Without, without decision makers, without your boss who is really committed, you actually can forget. Huh? At least it's not sustainable, all your terminology um, activities or your, your clients will not uh, buy it. <laughs> how to involve relevant stakeholders, how to collaborate with uh, relevant organizational units. This is also very important but very tricky. Yeah. Think about your organizations, your clients, that's all huge. Yeah. Or even if it's not huge, it's, it's uh, uh, difficult to, to bring people together to, to discuss things. Yeah? Are the translators, they are in the food chain, <laughs> usually uh, in, in, not in the first place, or not even in the middle. So this is also uh, something to be tackled and, and to be trained. You, you, can, you can learn it, how to speak the language of stupid managers and decision makers, not a problem. Uh, team working and communication skills also uh, actually uh, <coughs> most uh, uh, appreciated by, uh, by uh, examinees and, and trainees. How to organize uh, this uh, team communication, manage distributed di diverse teams. You know, this is your daily work to communicate with <laughs> the rest of the world, uh, world and, and really to, to use also tools and devices and, and apps uh, to, to organize that in a, in a, in a um, sufficient and successful way. Why conflict management? I like that very much. Because this is sometimes we oversee the obvious that when a translator <laughs> in, in, in the last uh, role yeah, comes up with, uh, but actually, does that mean the same thing as you know, a concept and a term or the meaning of a text? As we had today also some errors, mistakes from even brilliant translators. This is very uh, natural. But then you, you're delaying the process of ah, delivering, delivering. Yeah, I need it yesterday. It's always this time pressure. And, and of course, this uh, affects also your own uh, health, I would say. Um, and the, the, the conflicts you can't avoid, actually, because it's, it's the nature of the game. But how to, to deal with uh, these conflicts, I think it's, it's key and crucial also for your own uh, health and your, your love to, to your profession. How to train and motivate your team uh, is in the same line. Then one of the, the core uh, units in this training program is a, a highly interactive part where our trainees need to show us that they um, uh, didn't only understand the theory, but that they can implement uh, their knowledge and experience into practice. So they send us um, uh, their own terminology project and our uh, accredited uh, tutors and trainers Command on that, and there was feedback and, uh, and, and further uh, improvement of the project, and, and this will be also marked because the the, the goal of this training pro uh, program is also uh, an exam where you can uh, qualify for an international certificate. Uh, this unit is also um, a state of the art in terms of what we uh, heard uh, today already. Which standards are relevant for the for the uh, terminology and uh, translation business that somehow uh, interrelated. How to deal with copyright issues in terminology management. What about product liability in 
increasingly this is a, a hot topic, uh, product liability. Am I too fast? Because we ran out of time, I'm used to catch <laughs> up. <laughs> but but you, you will get a chance to ask questions and to stop it. Uh, since we launched that training program in, in 2010, and let me uh, emphasize and repeat it, it's a certified terminology manager. It's not a terminologist, it's a terminology manager. So from any background, you can qualify to that basic um, qualification. And it is, with, it is embedded within a, a, a large uh, European uh, qualification association um, platform, the ECTA which increasingly is going international. We will have the, the first Chinese training programs uh, soon because uh, obviously in China people are very fond of certificates and, and international <coughs> certificates. So really now we are preparing everything in, in, in Chinese, localizing it of course. And uh, this, this was uh, a real breakthrough in October this year. I've, I've been to China and signed already uh, a couple of and there is a real interest also from the from the university side that, that their master students can also qualify for this international certificate. So some figures. There are the first victims in, in 2010 at the University of Vienna when I switched off electricity in the middle of the exam and 45 people ah, cried with one voice and wanted to kill me. But I'm in a good position to be the boss so they couldn't kill me. But then, since then we know that even when electricity is off huh, and you switch it on again, all the results are saved. So nothing <laughs> has been lost. All the questions already answered were there. So that saved my life probably. Since uh, May uh, 2010, we have, and, and the, the number is, is increasing. It's, it's going very fast now. We have 170 registrations at the qualification platform. We have more than 150 certificates issued until now. I'm sure that it's even more than 25 countries because we had a, we have, I was showing we have a, had trainings in 2012 quite intensively. Seven ECQA certified training organizations. Because you, you need to follow all these standards in, in that platform, how to become an, an ECQA accredited training organization and whatnot. I won't bother with that. Uh, you see here from, from the countries, so it is, after all, we have here uh, the first, you know, the, that's European, Germany, Hungary, Spain, Switzerland, Austria, uh, Croatia, Canada, almost the same like Austria and Croatia, the Belgium, United States, Luxembourg, Czech Republic, France, Italy, Poland, Slovakia, China, China will increase, Ethiopia, Greece, Iran, Netherlands, Portugal, Romania, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia, United Kingdom, and so on and so forth. So it's really, it's not an, a European thing, it's an international thing. <coughs> And that's uh, what I was referring to. That's why the, the figures are surely not, not uh, um, completely up to date. We did this year, we did a lot of face to face trainings. We have every year we have an international terminology summer school, which is increasingly an intense way of preparing uh, participants to, to pass the exam uh, positively. And then we had uh, already these localized uh, uh, trainings. In, in uh, Timisoara, in Romania, in English, it was not in, in Romanian so far, it was in English. Uh, we had in, in Italy, we had the first uh, basic uh, training program, I think it was in Italian already, or, or in French, maybe it was in French. And uh, University of Beijing Hungary, it was in German, because there it is the, the German language department. Online courses with a nice Moodle platform are present in the future. I'm sure that uh, uh, it will be it will be double in the, in the years to come. Uh, it's up and running, by the way, in French, Canadian, Canadian French. I shouldn't say that. What, what's the politically correct French? French. French. It's just French. It's not. I'm Austrian. I'm not speaking German. German. I'm the Austrian variety. So I wouldn't be. Offended, yeah. but it's French. It's not French. <laughs> we really localize it. Uh, English, of course, as default, but global English. Yeah, don't, don't, 
look for British or American um, uh, terms, and German. German, German, I must say. Good. Uh, it is, as I said uh, already, Chinese coming uh, next, Turkish, uh, very, very much uh, in preparation already. Uh, and this is all the basic. But since it was such a success, we also in parallel uh, elaborated on the advanced uh, training course. So this could be that interesting also for, for you, the more advanced. I must say that the majority of, uh, of people who already passed the exam have a background in translation. And sometimes they even the terminologists. I wanted to, you know, to convince them, please wait for the advanced. You will be bored. No, no. First of all, some of these uh, units are very interesting for us, new for us, like this return on investment and talking uh, with, with decision makers and so on. And another very good argument, obviously, is as soon as there is an international certificate, they just get permission from, from their companies, even from the European institutions. We get requests and requests, please come in, do in-house training or do online, online uh, learning, e-learning, blended learning, now is, is, is really increasing, increasing. And of course, as soon as people address us and say, hey, there is a need, like in health terminology, yeah, we try to adapt these training courses to, to the specific uh, industry and business. And I think this will be an, an ongoing uh, um, successful story to add these industries, this particular uh, terminology, particular examples yeah, from various industries. Because uh, let's say 40, 50 percent maybe from the basic training course will most likely uh, stay the same. But you need to, then to add the specific uh, examples and real life. Uh, uh, examples from the industry itself. I put here all the links that you would need when you want to look it up uh, later on. Uh, because I would like to end, and I would like to invite you uh, to educate me what you think are the, uh, the, 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 the pressing needs of translators in terms of terminology management. So this is our experience yeah, from these two years of intense qualifying and even certifying uh, mainly translators or, or uh, terminology workers with a <coughs> translation background. The terminology trainings must be tailored. Uh, not too sophisticated in terms of theory. Yeah? It should be really hands-on to be directly implemented and used in, in your daily uh, work uh, of, of translator of translating tools <coughs> in, in North America this is more important for people obviously to get a good a, a sound education on also terminology tools what is available it's not only STL drugs there are other uh, things outside uh, as well then the, these good arguments for doing and really selling terminology because terminology work in a, in a translation uh, context, it's extra work. And as we, we, we learn, uh, of course you need to educate your, your clients and point out that, look, this pays off. Uh, for the next translation, I have my, uh, uh, my terminology database already up and running. And of course, all, as all of us, uh, you, you and the translators, uh, in general, need motivation, comfort, support, and love. If you don't love any longer to be a translator, just forget about it. Take a sabbatical, take a leave, refresh yourself, uh, but stop it. It will kill you otherwise. 